Let everyone stand, please. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hand, eternal in the heaven. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone, thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high, because he has known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, saying praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, in thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. O oh Lord, how great are thy works! thy thoughts that are very deep. The brutish man knoweth not, neither doth the fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, are most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish, and all 
the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eye also shall see my desire on my enemies and my ears to hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age they shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. Wherever thou has formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, but it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carest them away as with flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath. Are we troubled? Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We know the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so it is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servant. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the day wherein thou hast afflicted us, in the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands. And upon us, yes, the work of our hands, establish thou
Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to find a way to rejoice. We're going to find a way to give God thanks today. In spite of the situation, one thing that I realize about life, God is still good, even in death. He's still merciful. He's still kind. I know you may not believe it right now, but for those of you that do, you can put your hands together. God is still good to us. He's still a loving God. He's still a merciful God. And he's still a good God. My name is Elder Carl Terrence, and I'll be officiating the service on this morning. We are here to celebrate the life of Brother Terrell and to celebrate his home going. Life is not always easy. God never promised us the bed of roses. But it's through these tough times that God will be there with us. He'll be there with the family. He'll always be there with us. For that reason alone, we can still give God some thanks. Amen. Amen and amen. We're glad that everyone came today to help the family to celebrate and to help them through this trying situation. But still, God is good. At this time, there's one thing that's always going to help us when we need God, and that is the power of prayer. Prayer can change anything. Prayer can change your heart. Prayer can make every situation better. It is the power of prayer that's going to help us through this day. At this time, we're going to have Elder Edward Jackson to come and give us a word of prayer and words of comfort. Amen. One second, Elder Jackson. Elder Jackson. strength like the strength from God. You are my strength. When you feel your weakest, God will be there. Strength like no other. Like no other. Strength like no other. It's the power and of God. And the to me. You are my strength. Anybody know that God is their strength today? Anybody believe that God is your strength today? He'll give you power that you didn't know you had. He'll encourage you when you don't feel like being encouraged. Only God can do that. And he'll do it just for you and for you and for you. Amen. I'm Jackson. Let's put our hands together for Brother Terrell. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together for the Lord. But a distinguished young man. Come on. Hallelujah. With bowed heads. Jesus. Jesus. Lord God Almighty. Let your presence manifest itself in this place. Lord God Almighty, let your presence, Lord Jesus, let us call us together, remember to it. Put your joy, your love in our hearts. Let your confidence, let your love, Lord Jesus, penetrate as never before. Lord, you're the only one that can be our Alpha and our Omega. You're our beginning and end. Lord, we know that it's going to be hard to fill the gap that's in our heart. But we know that in the moments, in the days, the weeks, the months, even the years to come, you will heal us. You will make it so that we will remember the fun times that we shared with the world. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for having a chance to just spend some time with him. Lord, we ask once again that you will comfort this family. Comfort those that were his friends and associates. Lord, only you can do. The 
we pray this prayer for this family right now. In Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. But this time we're going to have two scripture readings, one the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament reading would be by Deacon Melvin Long. You come to the podium if he's here. Amen. And he'll be followed by Minister Ethel. Ethel Long, is that right? Let's receive them by saying praise the Lord and amen.
There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more For the former things are passed away, and that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Thus reading the word of God. And I would just like to say to the family, cry, Korea. Cry till you're satisfied. But I know a father said, weeping may endure for a night. Joy is coming. questions. Ask whatever you want to. But talk to the Father. You have a Father who cares. And he left you with a beautiful mom. And he let you have a loving Father. His mother. I've never lost a son. I can't say how you feel, but God knows. And I just want you to look to the hills from whence cometh your help, because it comes from the Lord. And I believe your son knew it. So yes, weep. Yes, ask questions. But know that you have a father who cares. And not only do he care, but he gave you an auntie and an uncle down the streets. Make sure you stop by if you want to. We love you all. Amen. Let's put our hands together for those two scriptures. Two powerful readings that will carry us through this moment. Something else that I've come to realize about life is that the Bible admonishes us to give God praise. And it doesn't say that we're supposed to praise him just when we feel good or when things are going our way. But David made it plain. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises will continuously be in my mouth. Meaning that even on today, we are gonna find a way to give God some praise, amen? Even in, when your heart is broken, even when you feel overwhelmed, there's still a way that you can give God praise. So it's the songs of Zion that's going to help us to praise God on today. At this time, we're going to be honored to have a musical selection by the Bethesda Cathedral Praise Team. Let's receive them by saying praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy comes in the morning, and we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Karina, I love you. Our early morning calls just changed. You call me. And so my heart breaks for you. But I know that we have a Savior and we have a King, and He dwells on the inside of us, and He gives us joy that's unspeakable and it's full of glory. Does anybody believe that? Even in the midst of the storms, there's joy that we can have. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't know it, you can at least clap along. Amen. There's beauty in my brokenness. I got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you captured me. I got joy instead of mourning. Can you help me see that beauty in my brokenness? I got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. And this is our mantra today. You give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep. Oh, way deep in my soul. Oh, you give me 
joy Yes, you down do deep in my soul. Oh, down, down on the inside in You soul. give me joy Come on, soul. come on and tell them There's beauty in my brokenness been so free calling your love for me i never been more secure knowing your heart Lord. never been so free knowing your love for me and i've never been more secure knowing your heart for me because you give me Christ himself. We thank God for that great musical selection. At this time, we're going to have some remarks from a few individuals, and this is always a very interesting part of a funeral. But one thing that we're going to ask is that everyone please be respectful of the family. The things that you say today are good, but you can't tell it all today. Leave your reflections, and the family will be encouraged from that. Amen. So we're going to start off with the, Mr. Dan Ramsey. He's here. Amen. Put our hands together for Brother Ramsey. Thank you. When I first met Terrell, when he said his name was Terrell, and I said I had a son named Terrell, and my son was going through some teenage years. So I said, I'm hating everybody who's named Terrell right now. <laughs> so we hit it off well from that day on forward. He never disappointed me. I got a few points here I want to say about Terrell. Son, couldn't ask for a greater son. Faith, his faith was strong. Husband, 100%. Father, strong wanted the best for his kids and his wife family he was always there for his family fellowship his fellowship was great no matter where he was at work everywhere work you couldn't ask for a better associate than Terrell he was always there I could call him and he would never he would always answer the phone 
when I visited the house last Friday, me and one of his family members was out talking, and I was talking about Terrell, an old soul in a young body. And when I walked up, his mother-in-law said, that's my Terrell. And I just want to give a special thanks to the PFG family for allowing me the last week to spend with Terrell family and also to allow Terrell latter days was his better days. He was happy when he joined the PFG family. Special, special thanks to Jason Leonard, executive VPO, Fred Dill, the VPO, and operation manager, Frank Perkins. And I have a plaque that I would like to present to the family, other friends out there as well. This is in the, this is in the memory of Terrell A. Tedder, and appreciation and thanks for your dedication service to PFG Atlanta you will always be part of the PFG family, 822-22 through 9222. And last remarks that I have to say, we always rush to the family when we lose someone. We run over there like the house is on fire. Well, one thing I've learned, that's fine and dandy, but this family is going to need you next week, week after that, month, year. So I ask everybody that's in this building, please remember to tell the family going forward. Thank you. Hey, man, thank you for those remarks. This time we'll have Tori Smith. And then be followed by Otis McNabb, Marintha Simpson. These are friends. Brother Terrell, they're going to come in that order. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank God um, for who he is. And I want to thank God for the life of Terrell. Are you Tedder? Was my best friend. Um, I met Terrell at the age of three. We were in preschool, and he made an impact on my life from the day I met him. Uh, we never we never parted um, till now. Hurts my heart to say goodbye, but at least I have the memory of him being a great father, a um, great husband, a great son, hard worker. Terrell loved to work. <laughs> um, I'm going to miss him. And this is hard, but I trust God, and uh, I thank him for his life. Amen. said, you know, you work in the wrong job. Gums, pink as ever, teeth, white as white. I said, man, you need to be on a toothpaste commercial. <laughs> he said, oh, they can't pay me. Terrell was a brother to me, one of my best friends. I wasn't blessed to have brothers, but God seen fit to give me four as I grew older. Terrell was one of them. The day Terrell became my brother, I knew this man was great. He wasn't a liar, he was very humble. And he didn't mind showing you how to get the money. He didn't keep it for himself. He went on vacation with his family and I had to run a route that only he knew. And he, he didn't leave me hanging. He said, oh, just look here. This all you got to do. And he said, call me. I said, man, I'm not calling you at 4 in the morning. He said, call me. I didn't plan on calling him, y'all, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and 
he didn't hesitate to pick up and help me. That's the kind of guy he was. I can't cram into five minutes the type of man he was. I can just give you a, a glimpse. To his parents, I'm sorry. You should never have to bury a child. Never. His shoes are too big to fill. But I'm only one phone call away, and I'll do my best. So Karina, Cash, and Katie, Jasmine and I, we are always going to be here for you. Terrell and I talked often, almost every day. And we always said, if anything happens to either one of us, I got your family. I, n I never thought that I would really have to. too am a man of my word he was my mentor my big brother and I'll be here for y'all Jasmine and I both whenever one phone call away thank you doing it's OJ Smith by the way I don't know what it, it's a rental Simpson in the book man um, I met Terrell um, August 2007 at Coke and I was a new guy he had been there for a minute and I'm gonna probably be a little bit longer than five minutes he um he came in and, you know, we kind of bonded and he was showing me something about, you know, the, the job. And I'm usually the person that's telling somebody else about the, what's going on. <clears throat> and then we took a, we took a real close um, bond together as far as our work ethic. And um, he used to always say, I never saw somebody that wanted to work like hard as I do. And I tell him, I didn't, I had never seen nobody try to do it like me. But, you know, and we kind of combined forces at Coke and made it a whole different era of how everything was done. And um, between then and maybe two years, we, we, we became brothers. I told him, I said, you know, I was the youngest, so I didn't have a, you know, a little brother. So he was my little brother from then on. And uh, I saw him do stuff at work and at home. And... Um, it was just done in a different manner, a different way that nobody else could ever do it or tried it. And uh, I asked him one day, I said, you got an S on your chest? And I gave him his nickname. I, I know you know, because I call you that junior. I gave him the name Tether Man. And, 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 and I told him, I said, you don't have a T. I said, you got a big circle with a T in it instead of the Superman sign, you know. And that was his nickname from um, from then on. And um, you know, we he he we went on to. I got married a few years later. I remember when he met Karina. And I think people that hit the lottery don't even be this excited. Dude was crazy. And everything that went on with them, it was like he wanted my approval because he was so proud of her. You know, he brought her by the house, and we've been, we moved, so all of, we've been through some stuff, all of me and him. And he brought her by the house, this was back when we lived in a different place, and we met, and uh, he ended up being my best man in my wedding. And this was after they had got married. And that night, I told him, I said, y'all being managed, that's where you came from. March, uh, no, May 23rd, 2009. Take nine months away from that, we'll get your birthday. <laughs> and uh, we just, we grew up together. We saw each other struggle. And um, 
We saw each other go through different things. I never had a grown man grab me crying, but I can open my heart up today and say that me and this man shed tears together because he wasn't satisfied with how he was performing for them. That man grabbed me, and this was back when he decided he wanted to be an owner operator with that truck. You remember that? That truck whooped him, boy. He he didn't. He, I mean, that was the only thing that I saw that ever beat him, and he couldn't take it. And that man grabbed me, and he cried, 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 because he was disappointed that he was gonna disappoint them. And I said, look, man, you've been through enough, you've seen enough, your wife gonna ride or die with you whichever way you go. And she did. And they fought through that. We fought through so much different stuff. And some of the amazing things that I seen him do, back in 2000, I think it was 14, 15, it was a real bad snowstorm. And, um, I mean, everybody in Atlanta was shut down on the side of the road. Nobody could move. Some kind of way, this man got in a car, got to his wife, picked her up out of all these people, got her safe. Now, if you don't tell me, if you can't tell me that determination, people, I was stranded in it. I called him. He said, man, everybody's stranded. I'm in my car. Well, he always get finished with his job early. Three hours later, I'm still in the truck on the side of the road, snow everywhere. This guy at the hotel with his wife. Don't ask me how he did it. I don't, he was in a car. No four by four, it was four by four trucks and stuff all over the road, couldn't move. He got to his wife, got her safe. And I just wanted to share a few things that me and him went through. Um, Kaden, you got some shoes to fill, buddy, but you've been in training. Me and Karina talked the other day, and the only time my phone has ever rung from Karina is if Terrell, because we always tried to make sure that we was intact with each other's families. And uh, Terrell would call me and say, hey, man, I'm in Decatur and cash on uh, in Conyers, man, the battery died, and I would go. Even back to the when my kids were babies, and I was like, man, I'm on the road, and my wife, we need, she need pampers. This dude would go to the grocery store and take stuff to my house. And you don't have people like that and brothers that you don't call brothers. That's real stuff for you to get out of your day to go take care of somebody else's family. And I would go cash. You remember the little black Honda? That car right there? Oh, man, Terrell said, I'm getting rid of this thing. It got to go. Because he said, I can't have my baby on the side of the road no more. And he, he wasn't playing with it. And... <clears throat> he just took a little time and made everything his own way. I never, knew, I never knew nobody that was known for smiling. You know people for being tall or short or what. This dude was known for one thing. And if you deny that, I'm coming. If you deny that smile, you know it's, you know it's his smile. But I'm going to leave it at that. Me and Karina talked. She said, I don't think he can be replaced. Ain't nobody can fill his shoes, but I think the closest thing to it is sitting right beside you because he's been in training for 12 years. Amen. Amen. We have one more final remark. I want to pronounce it right. Enoch Jackson, brother-in-law. Did I say it right? Amen. Brother Jack. Ah, okay. You fam, family's supposed to be the ones I give more time to, but Brother OJ over there, <laughs> he had to share all his, but it's okay. That's a good thing. Go ahead, Roger. All right. Give me honor to God, the head of my life. I just want to say to everybody that uh, we're going to miss Terrell. He was a great brother-in-law. But one thing that I do know, we're here to celebrate his life today, Amen. right? We're not here to cry which we are, but we are, but we're not really here to cry. We're here to be happy and joyous about the life that he gave to everybody around here and the joy that he felt to everybody in this room right here, okay? One thing I do want to say is, Terrell, he was a great brother-in-law. We always used to be in a little competition together with each other. And I used to say, Terrell, 
you can do this, you can do this. He said, no, I'm going to do it this way, EJ. I'm an independent thinker. And both of us are independent thinkers. So he was like, I got it, man. I got it, I got it. I said, brother-in-law, do your thing, right? And so the good thing I can say about him, man, I can't say anything bad today. I can only say great things about him. He did love his family. He loved Karina dearly. He loved Kate and he loved Cash. And the one thing that we have to do as a community, as a family, we have to be there for the family. We have to be there for Caden, Cash, and Karina. And it takes a village to raise a child. So at the end of the day, we can all sit here and talk all day long, but we gotta be about action, okay? And the biggest thing is, is Caden, Karina, and Cash. That's what I'm focused on right now, okay? So Karina, I already know, I already told her, that whatever Caden or Cash need, whatever she need, I'm here, 150%, okay? To the day I die, okay? So I'm gonna tell you right now, um, I was just thinking about something God put something on my heart before I walked in here today, that we are gonna set up a college fund for Caden. We're gonna set that up, um, and we need to do that. Um, so, so, so Karina, um, Wednesday when I'm off work, well, actually, I'll be honest. When I get back that Thursday, let's go set that up for Caden. Okay? Let's do something special for the young man. Because I love Caden dearly, and I love you dearly, too. Okay? But let's, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's celebrate his life today. Great man. Great heart. The filler, Miss Rosetta. He raised a great son. So you have nothing to be ashamed of. Raise your, raise your head up high. Thankful that God gave you to rare for 40 years that He gave you. Okay? So thank you guys, and that's, that's all I want to say today. Love y'all. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for those great remarks from everybody. It's nothing like friends and family getting up and leaving their remarks. I heard somebody say one time that there are two things that should happen at the black funeral. One is that we should celebrate the life of the person who's passed on. Get up and say some good things about them. Reflect on them and to uh, you know, just cherish the moments that we've had with them. And I think we've done a great job. You guys have done a great job doing that so far. The other thing that they said is that someone must speak something positive to the living. Because life has to go on. And we have a great pastor here today, our pastor, Suffolk and Bishop Stuart Reese III. He's going to bring the eulogy after this final selection. And it's the word of God that's going to help you today. It's the songs of Zion that's going to encourage you today. But it's God himself who's going to carry you through this day. At this time, we're going to be blessed with one more selection from Sister Sharika Horn and the praise team, or I don't know if they're going to sing with it, but Sister Sharika Horn, and immediately following Sister Horn, we'll be in the hands of our pastor, Suffolk Bishop Stuart Reese III, and he's going to bring us a word that's going to encourage us on today. Amen. Again, my heart goes out to the family. I give you my condolences. I know that God is going to be with you, and you have my prayers, my sincere prayers. Amen, and God bless you. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass, and he leads me beside the quiet streams. He restores my failing. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms. I have everything I need. He 
lets me rest in the meadow's grass And he leads me beside the quiet streams Oh yes he does He restores my failing health And he helps me to do what honors him the most Oh, that's why I'm safe Oh, I know I'm safe
I say we can give the Lord a hand praise. And this is a celebration of Brother Terrell. We ought to just give thanks for the life of Brother Terrell. If we can do that again, amen. We just thank God for his life. Amen. Uh, you know, it's amazing how outstanding a man can be. And he doesn't live to see 60 or 70 or 80. But I believe that what Terrell did in his 40 years has accomplished more than what many men have done in 70 or 80 years. We just need to give God another thanks. I want to say to his wife and his daughter and son, God is with you all. He knew this day was coming. Caught us by surprise. I think it caught everybody in here by surprise. But God is with you. In his word, he say he will not leave you nor forsake you. Say to mom, the in-laws, cousins, uncles, aunties, nieces, and nephews, friends, God is with us. And we need to know that. When I look at Terrell, when he used to come to this church, and when he was coming, he would come more regular before the pandemic. I think I saw him a couple of times during the pandemic. But it was amazing the way their family would come in. They would come in and file one right behind the other. And he would be so proud looking. You know, he got a beautiful lady, whether she was in front of him or behind him which was Karina, and he had a beautiful daughter and a handsome son. But he was proud to come to church. I would say that at our church, we tried to stress certain things, qualities of a man, and I think Terrell possessed all of those qualities. We say, if you're going to be a great man, you need to be a priest of your home, you need to be the prophet, you need to be the provider. You need to be the protector of your home. You need to be the promoter. And he had all of these attributes. Amen. He was something, and I'm learning even more about him today. I wish I had known before now. But he was a person where you never had a conversation with him. He was always a jolly person. I would say, I don't know, Terrell, he may have, he come to Bethesda at sometimes the House of Mercy. I said he may be like some of the people in Atlanta. But a lot of people in Atlanta have dual membership. <laughs> so he would come to our church whenever he can. But when he came, I was so delighted to see him and his family, amen, because they were just great people. This family, amen, these are great people. Amen, that we're talking about today. I notice in the obituary, uh, his wife, daughter, and son, they had one key word that they stressed in the obituary, and it was hero. They all said that he was a hero, their hero. I think Karina may have said superhero. And I looked at some of the attributes of a hero. He was a man of courage, and this is probably what they wanted to say. He was a great man. He was a man of the hour. I'm quite sure when he came home, they were delighted to see him. He was a brave man. He was a man that cared for others. He was a humble man. He was an honest man. You can just fit in anywhere. He was a nurturing man. He was a man of resilience. And all of these qualities fit Brother Terrell. I just want to cover just a few things in God's word with you today because I know that there is hope, amen, beyond death. There is hope 
beyond the grave. If I don't say anything else to you all today, I want you to remember there is hope beyond the grave. I know this family is going to miss their loved one, but Terrell's time was up according to God's rules and regulations. We don't know when our time is going to end. And what happened to Terrell that Wednesday, I went to see him. I think he was in, went into the hospital that Wednesday. I think the day before the 1st of September. And when I went to see him, I was shocked. I talked to Karina. She said he was normal yesterday. Everything as if he was laughing, talked to his mother. She said he called me that morning. And I understand that he addressed his mother as, as they ended the conversation, I love you. Not realizing that may have been the last time that he said he loved her. Karina, amen, husband Terrell had a headache, amen, and things, amen, didn't get better. But he was in God's hands. And that's what we need to know. Why am I saying this? Because we can't take for granted life. Life is precious. And I say to everybody that's in here today, I know we make plans for next week. Some of us have plans for this afternoon. But it's not promised to us. So what are you saying? I'm saying that each and every day when we wake up in the morning, we owe God a praise and say, Lord, I thank you. For life, health, and strength. This is not a tragic death that we read and hear in the newspaper or on the news. There are y'all, a lot of young men that's Terrell's age die of really tragic deaths. You can read the news and cut on the TV. This person was shot up or this person was found dead. But Terrell, God took him. And his time was up. You know, it's almost like running a marathon. 26 they told me 26.2 miles. But Terrell ran it a lot faster than us. That's why we're still here. But we thank God for his life. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and this is the hope of the believers, those that are walking with Christ. And many people don't understand these scriptures, but I just want to read them to you. It says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will bring, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Last verse, it says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. I must say, as we continue on, sorrow and grief, amen, of people losing a loved one is real. And as one of the Bible readers that read the scripture, it's all right to cry. It's natural for us to miss our loved one. 
Amen. I went to a service and they said, you all stop that crying. Well, we're crying because we are going to miss this person. Yes, yes. They were good to me. Amen. But I know that this person is in better hands because they're in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Grief is a feeling of remorse and sadness combined with pain and heartbreak. Grief can cause stress in the body. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can conquer grief. It's going to take the Lord to help us through these difficult times. I'm saying to the family, I'm saying to Karina, I'm saying to Cash and Caden, it's going to take the Lord to help you and the rest of the family and mother. It's going to take the Lord to help us through this difficult situation. The Holy Spirit, it heals, it empowers and strengths strengthens us and revives us amen and comforts and keeps us but we can rejoice in the memories that we have of, of Terrell and we praise God I think all of us have some fond memories of Terrell I think the gentleman that spoke from his job they had some fond memories of Terrell and because of that we're going to live he's going to live through each and every one of us However, God is our comfort at perhaps the most difficult time in our life. And as I stated earlier, there is nothing wrong with grieving. In the Bible, in the Bible, Abraham, he grieved the death of his wife, Sarah. Isaac grieved three years after his mother died. David wept when his friend Jonathan had passed away. And Jesus wept at the death of Lazarus. Death teaches us, and we need to remember this, to review and evaluate our own lives. Amen. When somebody dies, when somebody leaves this earth, when we have a loss, now I need to look at my life and see where I am with Jesus. See where am I treating my brother and my sister right? Am I loving Amen, my enemies and trying to do good to them that despitefully use me. Amen. Amen. That's how we review and evaluate our lives. I must say that all of us must pass this way one day. Some of us sooner than others. But all of us must pass this way one day. Amen. Amen. Our own direction and place, amen, where Jesus Christ desire for our lives. We must say that we cannot place emphasis on worldly goods and our own agenda. Some of us sweat the small stuff and don't seem the things that don't even seem important to us. Man, but we need to remember only what we do for Christ will last. We have to remember that. Life is like a vapor that appears for a while and then passes away. We can't boast about tomorrow because we don't know what the day will bring. Amen. Things can change quick. I mean, you can be talking right now and can't say a word the next 10 minutes. You can be walking right now and can't even walk out of this sanctuary because things have happened. You can be strong and then eventually you become weak or you have no strength. And none of us can predict the future. Amen. But it's appointed unto man to die once. All of us have that appointment that we must meet. And it's not left up to us, but we must be ready when that appointment time comes. God knows when to clock us out. When we go to our jobs, we clock out on our own. But when it comes to life and death, God knows when to clock us out. We will be held accountable for how we live this side of death. Man, Terrell's life is complete. But we, which are alive, we got to check ourselves out. We're the ones that got problems. Terrell don't have to worry about anything. 
We're the ones that got to worry about paying our bills. We're the ones that got to worry about feeding ourselves. Those that are trying to bring us down, amen, we're the ones that have to deal with those situations. That's why we need to be at peace with man, our loved ones, and love our enemies and live for the Lord. We don't know when it will be our last time to see our loved ones. No time is a good time to lose one. But death is not the end. That's what you need to remember. For there is hope for those that have believed on our Lord Jesus Christ through repentance of your sins. Baptism in Jesus' name. This is what we believe in. Amen. Receiving his precious gift of the Holy Spirit. There is hope beyond death. And you need to testify and tell yourself and encourage yourself that. The question would be, where does your hope lies? Is it in your possession? There's nothing wrong with having houses and lands, but are you playing, placing all your emphasis on that? There's nothing wrong with your financial portfolio being large. Amen. But are you placing all your emphasis on that? It is, amen, is it your good works or your education? We definitely need education in order to thrive in this society. Amen, or is it your position that you're placing emphasis on? Some of you may have asked, what is a suffragan bishop when they announced me? Amen, I'm just a pastor. Amen, it just means that you're assistant to somebody. Amen. But that doesn't mean anything. We all have to come before God one day. The preacher got to come before God one day. The deacons have to come before God one day. Those that sing, amen, and even those that don't even go to church at all, all of us must come before God one day. Amen. And Thessalonians individuals, they were waiting for the return of Jesus. And they did not understand how the resurrection of the believers in Christ Jesus who had already died related to the catching up of the living believers, amen, at the coming of Christ. And they thought it was a mystery, amen, for believers that were caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Well, that is a mystery and many times we don't understand Amen. Certain things that have occurred in God's word. But I'm here to tell you that this day will happen. Amen. I don't know the day nor the time when the Lord is going to come. But Jesus, he's coming in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. And it's going to happen so fast that we all, amen, we, we must be ready. We can't get ready then. It's almost like if you need automobile insurance, amen, you need to have it now before the accident occurred. Amen. You need to have it now, amen, before somebody hits you from behind. Amen. Many times we want to get insurance after the fact, but the Lord is coming for a people that have prepared themselves. Amen. Jesus promised he will come again. Amen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel. I know some of you may not believe it, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So what are you saying? There's a day that's coming, amen, that's greater than even death, amen. These bodies that we have, they are nothing but temporary tents. Uh, uh, how do you know they're temporary? Because some of us have illness and aches. Uh, uh, the things that I could do when I was 20, uh, I can't do at the age of 60 plus. Uh, the things that I could do when I was a teenager, uh, I cannot do them today. But I thank God uh, that I'm looking for a greater and a brighter day. Uh, a day that the Lord, that we can be with the Lord. Uh, I hope that you have heaven on your mind. Uh, somebody said there's not a heaven. And wherever heaven is, I just want to be where the Lord is. 
Amen. Wherever the Lord is, that's where I want to be. And if you want to say, if there's death, amen, beyond, amen, there's life beyond the grave, I'm here to tell you there is life beyond the grave. And I say to this family today that you be encouraged. God is with you. I say to the Tedder family and the Sergeant family, I say, if you all stick together, amen, God is going to give you strength. Uh, if you all hang together and care for one another and respect one another, God is going to give you strength. Uh, it may not be you will be healed today, but it's going to take time for this healing process. Uh, uh, you not only just have your family members, but you got a church family uh, the church here at Bethesda, we love you and we love this great family. Uh, there's a church, amen, that mother goes to, his church that he started in Athens, Georgia. They love you and they care for you. Uh, they're a host of friends. That's why everybody is here today, because you love this family. Uh, and if you love this family, I dare you to give God a hand clap and say, Lord, I just give you thanks. Uh, I give you thanks for this family because they've been good, amen. You've been good in spite of the loss. Uh, I just want to give you thanks. Uh, and as we, amen, leave this service today, amen, we are encouraged knowing that Terrell is in good hands. Uh, he's in the hands of a just God, uh, amen. He's in the hands of the creator, the one that made him, uh, He's in the hands of the one, amen, that knew everything about him. Uh, do you think that God made a mistake? No, he did not make a mistake. Uh, we just didn't understand the situation. Uh, uh, we just weren't prepared for this. Uh, but we thank God, amen, for his life. Uh, and he shall live on through each and every one of us. Uh, uh, we just need to know that in each and every day as we live, uh, we need to give him some thanks. Uh, I'm going to pray for this family every day uh, and ask God to strengthen this family. Uh, if you want to know who's your strength, you need to say that God is your strength. Uh, he's your refuge in time of trouble. Uh, that's what David said in the book of Psalms. Uh, God is my strength and my refuge. Uh, in times of trouble, uh, there's no need for me to fear. Uh, he's going to take care of me. Uh, he's going to feed me. He's going to give me a sound mind. Uh, I'm not going to lose my mind. Uh, but Lord is going to help me. Uh, uh, with every cast that you needed to do, I think you started school. Uh, but God is going to make everything all right. Uh, Caden, I say to you, whatever you need and whatever is lacking, uh, you have some men that will help you and guide you so that you can become a nice young man like your dad. I believe that your dad instilled, amen, a lot of good qualities in you, uh, and you must stand up. Uh, uh, take care and be the protector of your mom uh, and your sister. Uh, I say to Karina that God is with you. Uh, uh, you stuck with him uh, uh, through the rough times. Uh, I know when I went to the hospital, uh, you were very much concerned, uh, but you knew that it was in God's hand, uh, and God is strengthening you right now. Uh, uh, we just need to point our hands towards this family uh, and say, Lord, strengthen this family. Uh, give them what they need. Uh, meet every need. Uh, their financial need, uh, their emotional need, oh Lord, their physical need. Uh, Lord, I know that you can, uh, and I know that you will. Uh, is there life uh, after death? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, I mean, Terrell is in good hands. Uh, we need to celebrate uh, and give the Lord a hand praise uh, and thank him uh, for his life. Uh, thank him. Uh, for his diligence. Uh, thank him uh, for Terrell uh, being the husband uh, that he needed to be. Uh, we need to thank him uh, for being the father uh, that he needed to be. Uh, we need to thank God uh, for
for Terrell being the son uh, that he needed to be. We need to thank God uh, for him being the brother uh, that he needed to be, for him being the co-worker uh, that he needed to be. Uh, we just need to give God some thanks. Uh, and if we give him some thanks, uh, God will strengthen us. Uh, God will supply uh, our every need. Uh, I just want to say uh, I love this family. Uh, and God is with you uh, right now. Uh, God is going to be with you uh, on tomorrow. Uh, he will be with you uh, at the end of the year. Uh, I know you will have some days uh, that you may have to shed some tears. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, the Lord say, I'll be with you. Uh, I have not left you, uh, neither forsaken you. Uh, I'll be with you uh, through the thick, uh, through your valley experiences. Uh, I'll be with you uh, when it seems like you don't get no calls. Uh, when all the relatives uh, have left you uh, and they are gone their perspective ways. Uh, I'm still with you. Uh, I'm going to pay every bill. Uh, you're going to be debt free. Uh, you're not going to be owing nobody nothing. Uh, I'm going to take care of you. Uh, that's what the Lord said. Uh, and we need to believe it. Uh, let's give God a hand praise uh, and thank him uh, for his goodness uh, and his mercy. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, I better stop uh, because they got to get to Athens. Uh, they have a football game uh, in Athens. Uh, I know it's going to be crowded, uh, but Terrell is going to break up the crowd uh, because cars are going to have to pull over to the side uh, and they're going to say, here comes Terrell. Uh, I'm coming into the city uh, of Athens. Uh, this is greater than the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, here's a man uh, that loved his family. Uh, here's a man uh, that was honest and just. Uh, Here's a man huh, that did everything right. Huh. Here's a man huh, that loved his enemies. Huh. Oh, he's going to break through. Huh. Oh, everybody huh, have to stand to attention. Huh. Everybody huh, have to pull over to the side. Huh. What a good day to rail huh, to go home to Athens. Huh. You got 70,000 folk plus huh, that got to give you respect. Huh. Oh, you got people huh, on the side of the road huh, that may be walking, huh, have to give you respect huh, to Rail's life. Huh. Oh, you talk about Queen uh, uh, Elizabeth, huh, but Terrell is in that number. Huh. He was a great man, huh, although 40 years old, huh, but he was a great man. Huh. If he wasn't great, huh, why did you come today? Huh? You came to pay your respect uh, because he's a great man. Uh, you came to pay your respect uh, because he was an outstanding man. Uh, and we need to give God some praise uh, and thank him. Uh, let me stop right now. Lord, let's give him a praise. Yes. We're going to call for the... Amen. The mortuary is to come at this time. Amen. This family is, is going to be in need of us. Amen. We I believe this is Willie Watkins. Amen. We thank God for them as they come at this time. better than that. I said, let's give a hand clap of praise for the life, the love, and the legacy of Mr. Terrell. Amen. First and foremost, I'd like to thank God who was the head of my life. Without him, I'm nothing, but through him, all things are possible. Elder Carl Terrence, the family wishes to have me say thank you for officiating service today. And to Pastor Reese III, the family wishes to have me say thank you for your consoling words during their time of bereavement. I think we'd all agree that those words were well needed and well 
well received. Amen. And to the many family and friends that has gathered this long smile away, the family wishes to have you say thank you. Your presence here today means more, more than words can express. And to anyone that has given this family a token of love, whether it was a call, a text, a visit, or one of these beautiful floral pieces, the family wishes to have me say thank you. And to the family that sits in front of me, his beautiful wife, Miss Karina, his children, Kashmir and Caden, his parents, Miss Rosetta and Mr. Phillips. On behalf of our senior director, Mr. Willie A. Watkins, our directors in Riverdale, Mr. Reggie Eppinger and Ms. Akia Muhammad, and the entire Willie A. Watkins staff at all five locations, we'd like to say thank you. Thank you for entrusting us with your loved one. Thank you for trusting us at your most vulnerable moment. Although there's no words to adequately express our most sincere gratitude, we prepared this memorial plaque for you.
Ask you 